In this chapter, we're going to be studying stereochemistry. And basically what that is, is we're going to be looking at the three-dimensionality of molecules and the consequences that the 3D structure has on react and interact with other molecules. So to start this off, I want to look at um, a fairly well-known example of a molecule known as thalidomide. And you'll see that I have two structures drawn here. Um, we have R thalidomide and S thalidomide. And if you look carefully at these two structures, you'll notice that the only difference in them is on these carbons. And essentially it's just in the three dimensionality. On the top structure, we have this large group coming out of the plane toward you. On the second structure, you have this large group going back into the plane away from you. This compound was extremely popular in the 1950s um, in Germany and several other countries. And what they did was they prepared thalidomide as what's known as a racemic mixture. And that just means they prepared it as an equal mixture of these two. And what we're going to find is that when we do chemical reactions that produce these new three-dimensional centers, it's much easier to produce as a one-to-one -one mixture as opposed to producing you know, either of these pure. So that's why you know, when they were preparing this, it was much easier just to make this racemic mixture of the two and use that. And in fact, they did testing um, on rats and found that no matter what concentration um, this molecule was given to the rats, it would not kill them. So this was marketed as a safe drug, um, specifically as you know, a non-barbiturate sedative. And um, it was almost as widely adopted as aspirin at the time. Um, in many countries, um, with the exception of the United States, um, the FDA head at the time just didn't think there was quite enough data on it to fully approve it as an over-the-counter medication. But it was undergoing clinical trials in the U.S. at the time. Um, but during the 50s, this was widely used as a sedative, and um, there was um, an OB doctor that found that it also had an off-label use to prevent morning sickness and he started prescribing it to his patients for morning sickness and um, that trend continued and it became quite popular for that purpose. Unfortunately, um, as he began to deliver patients from mothers who were taking this drug, he found that many of the babies um, actually had birth defects. Uh, specifically, they had um, you know, shortened and deformed limbs or sometimes even missing limbs. By 1962, um, this drug was pulled from the market and banned entirely. Um, more recently, it has come back onto the market um, as a chemotherapy drug. Um, but it is you know, very carefully prescribed that anyone that's taking this um, cannot be an expectant mother. Subsequent studies, however, found something kind of interesting, and this is a case for many other molecules as well. But the two different molecules here, and these are known as stereoisomers, So they're three-dimensional isomers, and we're going to get into that um, here in just a bit. But between these two stereoisomers, the R version is completely harmless. While the S version is a tetradogen. which means it causes birth defects. So 
So what this example does is it you know, paints a picture to show us how important the three-dimensional structure of molecules is. And we're going to see that through some other examples later on. But uh, this particular case here um, actually led to the strict um, drug approval process that um, the FDA currently undergoes for any drugs. But also, any time a pharmaceutical company now makes a molecule that can have different stereoisomers, every stereoisomer has to be prepared independently and tested independently. The whole reason behind this is the fact that you know, our bodies are three-dimensional in their nature, and we have different receptors with active sites, and you know, one molecule might fit into one active site, while another molecule, because of its 3D structure, will fit into um, an entirely different active site. So, you know, the three-dimensional structure of molecules has a huge consequence on how these drugs work. This is why, as chemists, we must have a fundamental understanding of the structure and properties of different stereoisomers.